I had students in my class read George Orwell's 1984, a dystopian novel written back in the 1940s. And uh, after that, they had literature circles formed around different dystopian works. One of the books that we um, had on our reading list was Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange. And um, the students formed literature circles and spent a couple weeks reading the book and discussing it in small groups. And then they would um, report back to the rest of the group about, um, you know, key quotes from the book, uh, interesting facts, relevant facts about the author's life, and also um, relevant, you know, how is the book relevant today? The presentation software we used was Google Docs presentation uh, function. And I was curious to see whether they would find this similar to, easier than, better than, worse than PowerPoint, which essentially is what they've grown up using when they do their presentations. So what I'm focusing today on is their opinion of Google Docs presentation software versus Microsoft's PowerPoint. So what I did was I uh, went to my Google Docs menu and to find out um, how they felt about this to get an evaluation from the students I wanted to create a form which essentially just uh, emailed them um, in my case I emailed them this questionnaire. And the questionnaire is pretty easy to put together. You just uh, use this thing that says add question and you can type in um, you know what the form title is, anything else you want them to know, and then you can add these different question types, um, whether it's a text or a paragraph or multiple choice or check boxes, etc. This is how this form looked to my students when it was emailed to them. You can see that it's titled Research Tools Evaluation. Um, maybe now you can see that it's titled Research Tools Evaluation. I'm interested in finding out whether the research tools introduced in the class were helpful to you in the last couple of activities that we've done. And then I asked them some questions like the name was something I wanted to know. Um, Google presentation allows you to work on group projects without group members having to be together physically at the same place in the same time. How often did your entire dystopian book group meet in person to work on the project together? These are just radio button choices. As the students filled out the questionnaire that I emailed them, the responses came back to me in my Google spreadsheet and so I can see all of their responses here, which is nice, but the, the real advantage of this is this little tab here called Form. And this will display it in a lot more user-friendly form. So when I click on this form, This little pop-up box will allow me to embed it in a website if I want to. But I really want to see the responses. And if I hit, you'll see that I get these pie charts that actually break down the responses for me. So if I've asked those questions that were the radio button kinds of questions, you'll see uh, I've got these. I've got these results like the question that says Google presentation allows you to work on a group project without the group members being physically together. Um, how often did your entire dystopian book group meet in person to work on the project together? Interestingly enough, only 15% of the students here said that they always got together or most of the time got together. You can see the vast majority of them 85% got together physically less than half of the time. 24% of them never got together physically to work on this project. 
One of the nice features about Google Docs is being able to see the revision history. So, you know, that would be a way as a teacher I can see who's been um, contributing what to the project. So, if I go to File, Revision History, uh, one of the questions I asked him was, is the revision history an accurate picture of the actual work that people did? Because if you look at some revision histories, it looks like really um, one person did a lot of the work and maybe not everybody was pulling their weight, but um, that's not always the case. For instance, even though the majority of the students did say that uh, the revision history provides an accurate reflection of the amount of work each individual did, 68% of them said yes, the revision history is accurate, but 32, you know, a third of them said that the revision history is not completely accurate because remember the revision history just shows what's been done to that particular document. And some of these students said things like, the girl who put a lot of time into the graphics is not well represented in the revision history because she did a lot of her work, say, in Photoshop. And another group said that they, when they physically got together, they just logged into one student's account. And so it's possible that that revision history just shows that one person did the work when, in fact, they were collaborating at the same time, and so it's only in that one account that all the revision is being shown. So, word of caution, if you look at the revision history, it's not always an accurate reflection of group work. But still, the majority of them did feel like it was an accurate reflection of the group's work. So, in closing, I would say that the Google presentation had a lot of appeal to my students. They're busy, they've got a lot going on. Uh, it seemed to appeal to them that they didn't always have to get together. They could work at their own convenience on the project. I would also say that the Google spreadsheet and form function is something that a lot of teachers should explore because I think it's a good way to gather information about the efficacy of the techniques that we use in class and I think my students really know best. So I think this was a pretty honest appraisal of the software and it gives me some direction for further research and some ways to improve my own teaching.